Okay, so in this problem, we're told an electron with speed v sub 0 equals 27.5 times 10 to the 6 meters per second is traveling parallel to a uniform electric field of magnitude E equals 11.4 times 10 to the 3 newtons per coulomb. A, how far will the electron travel before it stops? And B, how much time will it elapse before it returns to its starting point? So in this problem, we're going to be using a couple of things mixed with kinematics. Um... But first thing is you want to draw what's going on. So we have this particle. We know it's an electron. So I'm just going to write E right there for electron. We know its speed is going to be 27.5 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. And it's traveling parallel to this electric field, which is 11.4 times 10 to the 3 newtons per coulomb. Okay, and so what we're trying to find is how far the electron will travel before it stops. And so in this part, First, what I'm going to do is lay out the kinematics that we're going to use to solve this. So generally, the way I start my kinematics problems is I always like to write out my given and then all the variables. So assuming it's traveling on the x, I'm going to write delta x, right, which is its displacement. Uh, and then the other variables are its initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, and time. And so what we're trying to find is how far it travels before it stops. So from this point, assuming it's zero, how far is it going to move? And so what that distance is, it's the delta x. So what we're trying to find here is the delta x, and then we need three other variables to solve for it. And uh, what do we know? We know the initial velocity is 27.5 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. Uh, and we also know that we're going to when it stops. And so at the point it stops, right, after this distance change, its final velocity is 0 meters per second. So we know this value is 0. Uh, we don't know how long this is going to take. And so what you should see here is we need to find the acceleration. Because if we have the acceleration, we can solve for the delta x. And so that's what I'm getting at here just by showing you this first. So what we need to find is the acceleration. Okay, cool. How do we do that? So to do that, we're going to mix a couple of equations. First one is f equals ma. So we know force equals mass times acceleration. So if we can get, right, dividing both sides by m... We know the acceleration that's going to be uh, experienced by this electron is going to be the force applied divided by the mass. And so by being in this electric field, we know there's going to be a force acting on this electron. Okay. And so we obviously we know the force is going to be acting opposite to it because it's going to slow down, right? If there was no force or it was acting in this way, it would just keep going and it would never stop. So uh, we know the force is acting opposite. And how do we find that? So the formula is force equals... Uh, it's charge times the electric field it's in. So you can figure, uh, you can find the force that a um, particle in an electric field is experiencing by multiplying its charge times the electric field, right? And then we just divide it by its mass, and that'll give us the acceleration, right? And keep in mind, this is the net force when you do this, since you're doing the sum of the forces equal ma, but there's only one force acting on it. So the net force is just the force as a result of the electric field. Okay. Another thing you should realize is uh, a quick rule. So if you have a particle with a negative charge traveling parallel to an electric field, the force is always going to point opposite of the electric field. So in this case, it's going to point this way. If it was positive, it always points the same direction as the electric field. So that's just a little trick uh, uh, to understand what's going on. So keep in mind when I solve for this force, I'm going to use the absolute value of both of these values uh, because basically the way this stems is if I, I know the charge of this is negative. So if we didn't have these here, this is what causes the force to be negative. And so we just assume the force uh, is opposite to the way it travels. That's why it would be negative. Uh, but yeah, just keep that rule in mind. If it's uh, negative, then it's traveling or the force is opposite the electric field, positive, same direction. So uh, now it's just a matter of solving. So keep in mind F equals QE. So A is equal to Q E over M. Cool. So uh, now what we're going to want to do is actually just go ahead and solve or plug in. Sorry. Starting with the charge of an electron. Once again, we're using absolute values as I explained before. Um, but yeah, so 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. That's the charge. Multiplying by the electric field is that value right there. Uh, and then dividing by the mass of an electron, which I believe is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. Uh, but yeah, so 
uh, essentially you have the acceleration here. Keep in mind, it's going to be negative. The reason this is, is the force was negative. So this was actually negative like this. I didn't include it, but let me just draw it here like this, right? Because F was negative. So this is negative QE really, which could stem from this negative charge. Uh, but I just wanted to explain it to you guys that way. Uh, so the acceleration is negative, uh, and then this right here. And when you do this, you're going to get minus 2.0022 times 10 to the 15 meters per second squared. So obviously an extremely large value here. Uh, and yeah, so now we have the acceleration. All right, guys, I just realized I made an error after doing this video, uh, but it's still right. So I wrote this acceleration value. But when I did it right here, I did not include the zero. Uh, this is the correct value. So you'll see here that I plug in the wrong values. But just keep in mind that these answers are still correct. I just did not write in the zero. So this is the right. You have to have two zeros there. I only wrote in uh, a zero for each of these. I needed to have two. Uh, but these answers are still going to be correct. So just ignore that and uh, make sure you write in your extra zeros or your extra zero. Uh, sorry about that. And uh, yeah, so let's continue putting it up here. Let me go ahead and write it. Uh, so we have the acceleration now and I have three variables, so I can just solve it using a uh, kinematics. So looking at it, what equation are we going to use? Uh, the equation I'm going to use is this one right here. You should be pretty good at kinematics. You've done it in your first physics class, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, so you have V squared equals the initial velocity squared plus two a times Delta X. So we're solving for delta x. So uh, if we want to get this, it would be v squared minus v sub zero squared. Keep in mind the initial, or sorry, final is zero. So this value basically just goes away. So you're just going to have minus v sub zero squared uh, equals 2a delta x, and then divide by 2a. Notice uh, a is negative, so those negative signs are going to cancel. So uh, delta x equals minus 27.5 times 10 to the 6 squared. Uh, and then we have 2 times our acceleration minus 2.022 times 10 to the 15 meters per second squared. I actually don't need to write the units. Uh, and yeah, so your delta x, keep in mind the negatives cancel. Uh, and you'll get it equals point. 1889 meters so about or just 0.19 meters that's how far it's going to travel right in this interval and we set this interval to be how far it goes to when it stops so basically your answer to a is point uh 19 meters so that's your answer to a there um and yeah so this is a let me write that there now let's focus on b so Let's just write B and let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so for B, what they're wanting us to find is how much time will elapse before it returns to its starting point. And so how are we going to do this? So uh, the way we're going to do it is a cool trick that if we can find the time it takes for it to stop, if we multiply that value by two, it's basically going to be the time, right? So the time it takes for it to go this way is the same amount of time as it takes for it to go back. And that's kind of a trick you can do with stopping distances, or not stopping distances, but when you're going to rest, if you just multiply the value by two of the time it takes to get there, it's the time it takes for it to go back. So uh, that's a little cool trick you can do. Uh, but to do that, we need to find the um, we need to find the time it first takes to get there. Obviously, right? We're just multiplying the value by two. So first, we need to do that. We're just using these kinematics, right? We're just going to solve for the time variable in this case. So it's just a matter of solving it again. So uh, I'm choosing this equation because it has T and I think it's just the easiest to solve. Um, but plugging it in, uh, the final velocity of this interval is zero. So zero equals the initial velocity is 27.5 times 10 to the six. Uh, and then we have plus a negative number. So just minus 2.002 times 10 to the 15. Uh, and then multiply by t. Um, I'm not going to show you the basic algebra, but obviously you're just going to minus this value to the other side, then divide by this to get t. Um, and when you do that, you're going to get 
uh, 1.373, we'll just say five. Uh, keep in mind this is in seconds since we're dealing with time here. And then as I said before, uh, you can just multiply the value by two uh, to get the time it takes for it to go back. So, or sorry, this isn't 1.37. This is times 10 to the eight or 10 to the minus eight. My bad about that. 10 to the minus eight uh, seconds. I forgot that, my bad. Um, but yeah, once again, just multiply by two uh, and you'll get 2.75 or about 2.746, which is about 2.75, we'll say, uh, times 10 to the eight or minus eight seconds. And so this is your T. Uh, sorry about that mistake, by the way. Uh, but yeah, so just multiply the value by two and you'll get this. And yeah, so this is the amount of time it takes for it to uh, go like this and then back. So uh, yeah, your answer is here 0.19 for A and then 2.75 times 10 to the minus eight seconds. Uh, but yeah, so those are your answers. And uh, hopefully you found uh, this video useful.